let me tell you a story. Uh, actually, it was, I think, 2004. I'm affiliated with uh, TOG, Community Volunteers Foundation, Toplum Gönder Vakfı, since 2003. Uh, and I think it was back in 2004 uh, that imagine that there is a big uh, youth gathering. There are around like 300 young people, most of them university students in the same room. And we were having a discussion about recording some form of, uh, you know, like their volunteer work in hours and all that. So as it's a youth meeting, I have come up with an Excel sheet and I tried to put up some, you know, like fun names, which I think were at that time interesting uh, because they should be recording uh, volunteer hours of every volunteer in their student club so that we have a big data about what they do, you know, like in, the, in their student clubs and all that. So, um, is anybody here who knows a name, for example, called uh, Kızıl Maske? You know them? Tom Brax, Tom Mix, you know them? Okay, the ones who are shaking our heads are more or less at my age. Uh, and that was a shock to me. Uh, because uh, when I was putting those names up there, these are like comic, Italian comic uh, hero names actually. And, you know, like I tried to be, at that time, I tried to be, you know, like a youth friendly guy, putting up some funny names, you know, like comic hero names, and I tried to get an interaction with them and make the people laugh and all that. And there was no energy in the room. And then I suddenly said, you know, like, you know these guys? And they said, no, we don't know them. Uh, and I was like, oh, how come? And all. So that was the problem. But the problem was not about, you know, like young people not reading comics anymore. The problem was me, because I was thinking that at my age, 20 years ago, when I was a young kid, you know, I was reading a lot of comic books, which were very important at that time for me. And I thought, you know, like at this time, the young people of today were, you know, like reading comics as I was reading back there. The problem was me, because time changes very fast. So let me come up with why we are talking about young people today. It's a very typical late capitalism story. The more you have late capitalism, the more you talk about young people. So in this country, of course, in order to you know, like save the country, you need a new military, you need the new army. That means you need to educate people. Yeah? You cannot educate the 50-year-olds because that's new technology. So you need to educate the younger ones. So that's where the myth of you know, like the military, you know, like the young officers comes into the picture. And that's the story of education and young people comes into the picture since 150 years. And in order to have a good army, you need healthy people, yeah? So that's where we have the marriage of young people and sports, because at the end of the day, a good army needs healthy people. We're always talking about men here, don't worry, yeah? So this is, this is where it goes since, you know, like 150 years. Up until 1980, young people in this country were in the need of trying to save the state in their own terms, yeah? But something happened in 1980 where we had the military junta, and after that, the problem becomes the young people. So if there is a problem, you will try to solve that problem. So that's why today, young people are not an asset of this country for the greater public view, but there are, they are problems of the society. So if you see a problem, you're trying to solve that problem. Huh? You come up with an education system in which you think this is the best, so let them let them learn what I think is the best. So that is the problem in very general terms. And there are some myths about young people. And they are not only related to Turkey, actually. This is like more or like a, you know, like a global thing. We think, when I speak also, young people, young people, young people, yeah? We know that a young person who is 18, who is a young woman, 18, who lives in, for example, Amasya, has different needs than a young person who is 18 in Istanbul, yeah? They are not a homogeneous society, like they're, they're like different among them. They are, we think, tomorrow of the society. No, because they live today. 
If you think that they are the tomorrow of the society, then you don't give their rights to them because you just say, ah, oh, you're going to come tomorrow. Don't worry about that. No, they are not the tomorrow of the society. They are the today of the society. We think, oh, it's only an age group. In a, in a, in a, in a big, you know, like a UNDP, World Bank, whatever, like big organization meetings, when you talk about young people, people start to ask, but what kind of an age group are you talking about? You know, all these questions and all that. It depends where you are. Yeah? For example, if you are in UK, if you are under 18, you are a young person legally. In Turkey, it's more or less 15, 24. If you go to, for example, Germany, it's 15 to 29. So it's, it's not only an age group. It's something more than that. And of course, the, the very myth of, ah, what do young people need? Education and work. Apart from that, they don't need anything. Just push out some educational, you know, like opportunities, push out some, you know, like work opportunities, and then you, you're going to solve all their problems because what are they? They are people. They live. They have their needs, you know, like they fall in love. They have housing needs and all that. But we always think that, ah, oh, you know, like work and education, and that's the end of the story. And, of course, is anybody here who, uh, like, for, the, for, for example, their mothers or fathers have tell them that when I was at your age... Don't worry, they have been saying this since hundreds of years. It is because we think being a young person is something which is outside of geography and outside of time and space. Okay? Because we think that being a young person in 1968 is the same thing as if it's in 2013. Let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. Okay? So, um, let me introduce you to a nice uh, thing, which is called gerontocracy. Okay. Turkey is more or less a gerontocratic country. Okay. We think age is the most, one of the most important things in this country. The more people are older, we think the more they are experienced. So that's why, when, as young people are the tomorrow of this society, when they get older, it's going to be better. But they are, now they are, you know, like more or less uh, uneducated, inexperienced, and all that stuff. So I know better than them because I'm 40 years old. Tricky. Facts and figures. 12 and a half million young people in this country. Their population is decreasing as in every developing country. If you would ask the same question two or three years ago, that was 17%. Now it's 16%. But what is significant today is among the young person, in the coming years, in the coming 15 years, the disadvantaged young, the percentage of disadvantaged young people would be increasing because in Turkey there, there is a very great income disparity, which means in some families, in some regions, people are still, you know, like giving birth to a lot of young people. So at the end of the day, although the percentage would be decreasing, as the population is increasing also, their number would be more or less the same, but the disadvantaged young people among young people would be increasing if the story will be like today. And of course, let me introduce you to another figure. 40% of young people are out of work and they are not in education as of today. However, a lot of economists, in terms of economist terms, people think that, oh, they are idle young people. No, they are not idle. They do a lot of stuff, you know? Uh, they record a lot of, you know, like hip hop songs. They fall in love. They go around. Let me tell you a story again. Uh, I'm also affiliated with Bilgi University, and we were providing a lot of opportunities in the youth center in Bilgi University's central campus, uh, which we work with the young people outside in the neighborhood. Okay, so it's a, you know, like a good campus. A lot of young people come into the campus. They hang around on the grass and all that. And you know, like we have this you know, like young people and education motto. So a lot of academic people were coming there because we were providing a lot of opportunities to young people. But they were coming into, to, to us and tell, telling us that, you know, but, you know, like, these people are coming from the neighborhood, yes, but they hang out on the grass, yes, and they don't do anything. And we told them that they are doing something. They are hanging out. Yeah? <laughs> they are hanging out. But it's a, it's a thing of, you know, like, education, you know, like, young people, teach them everything. The world is not like that. And, again, you know, like, uh, this is more or less a European figure, unless you are Spain and Greece, but uh, when you get any kind of uh, uh, unemployment rate of any country, that's at least twice uh, the number of unemployed young people. If you are in Greece, for example, I think it's around like 55%. If it's in Spain, I think it's around 52%. Um, in Turkey, they can elect, they can give votes, but they cannot be elected. 
So that means if you're 18, you can go and decide on your own, but if you want to represent people, you're not allowed. To. Because why is that? Because your time will come tomorrow, <laughs> not today, okay? Uh, labor participation is 40% among young people, that's for adults, it's 54%. And of course, high school graduation, lowest of OECD countries. We have a lot of dropouts in high school, not because they are lazy. Personally, I know a lot of bright young people. You know what's happening in the classes? They are, are so different from the people of the class that the system cannot get them in. So it, you know, like it pushes them out. That is the reason why we have a lot of dropouts in this country, the lowest in OECD countries, yeah? Uh, and the last, I'm talking about young people because I will be talking about the young women in the coming minute. So again, more or less 16% of the population gets around 2.5% of GDP. That's a disaster in numbers. Believe me, we buy tanks, we buy planes, that is around 5% of this GDP, okay? But you know, for us, young people are so important, it's only 2.5% of the GDP. And if you get out the education, it's only 367 Turkish liras per year, per young person, that we are giving from our taxes. We can collect it among ourselves. It's, it's very few money at the end of the day. 5%, less than 5% are members of the NGOs, okay? So people may think that, ah, oh, you know, like they are apolitical, what's wrong with young people and all that? Well, actually, I have seen in the last year that they are not, at least some of them, are not that apolitical. So maybe there is something wrong with the system. Maybe there is not something wrong with the young people. Uh, and of course, when you look at their, you know, like youth association, student association percentage, it's only 1.16%. I will tell you why in a minute. So there are some challenges, you know, like about young people, like if you're a student, it's most probably that you go to another city to, you know, like study and all that, so, so you have a housing problem, okay? Participation to the parliament, that is a problem again. Participation to the society, imagine that you live in a neighborhood, okay? So you want to say something about the family, about the neighborhood, about the school, no, there is something wrong with you, because at the end of the day, a more young person is like me, and I can be a teacher, I can be a mom and dad, I can be an academic person, I can be a politician. The more young person is like me, the more better that young person is. So that is a problem. Doesn't matter what I teach young people, the problem is I am trying to shape the young people. That is the problem in itself. So of course we have huge problems about freedom of speech. Let me give you an example. In most of the university, universities in Turkey, if you would like to, you know, like form a loving association, and I'm not talking about, you know, like LGBT organizations, you know, like gender equality, women organizations, I'm talking about the bird loving association uh, club in a, in, a, in a university, okay? If there is an already bird loving association in that university, the university admi administration will tell me that go out and hang out with those people. So I don't have uh, the freedom to set up my own student club in that university. And we tell the, you know, like the administrators, so why do we have so, you know, like a lot of women organizations? There can only be one women organization in this country, because it's the same logic. There can be only one, you know, like a labor organization in this country and everything will be sold. But life is not like that. And of course, autonomy is very important. Uh, again, the problem of they, they, cannot, they cannot stand on their own because you have a strong family, you have a strong, you know, like establishment which is blocking them. And of course, value-based youth policy. This is very important, let me tell you, because it is very related with young people, uh, young women's participation. Uh, every year in Turkey, you know, there are free youth camps which are organized by government people, uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, and every year there are around 35 to 40,000 young people participating to the camps, yeah? So it's a good camp, you know, we have a lot of opportunities in the camp. And you know what's happening in the last three or four years? All the youth camps, all of them are segregated. You have girls camps, you have boys camps, okay? And that's with the public money. That's with our money. So that's again, more or less a problem. So let me get to, from the young people to the young women in this country. Early marriage is a problem. I think it's around, 
24 years of age that young, young women are getting married, whereas for men it's around 26. So there is some kind of a problem there. Labor participation is a problem because at the end of the day, if women cannot work, that means they don't have the power in the family. So if something goes wrong, if they want to get rid of their, you know, like husbands and all that stuff, they, there will be a problem because they don't have the financial means to do that. Unemployment, women un unemployment is again high. And of course, unpaid housework at the end of the day. Although they may work uh, outside, when they go home, they do the kitchen, they do the, you know, like the laundry, they do other stuff. So it's unpaid, it's work but it's unpaid work, yeah? Um, we, did a, we did a research uh, in May, just before Gezi Park uh, um, uh, incidents, and um, probably this is the uh, most uh, up-to-date uh, youth representative research in Turkey nowadays. We did it in Bilgi University's Shebeke Network project with Konda Research Institute. So I took out some, you know, like figures, which is about young women in this country. We asked the question, have you been out of the town, out of your town? Okay, so 58% of women said, yes, we went. And then 70% of men said, yes, we went out of our town. So there is a problem about mobility at the end of the day. Because if somebody goes out, that means he, she can see a lot of stuff, learn a lot of stuff. However, relatively speaking, young women in this country are less mobile. You know why? It's not because of them. It's because of the environment that they live in. Again, if you had the opportunity, uh, that's 80%, by the way, uh, if you had the opportunity, would you be able to go out, you know, like out abroad for a training? 30% of the women would say yes, whereas 80% of male would say yes. So there is some kind of a problem regarding the family issue. We asked the question, if your family would st uh, stop uh, supporting you, can you continue to live? That's a very tricky question because at the end of the day, we know that because of this autonomy problem, young people cannot breathe in their families because they always look out to their families to support them and all that. So that's what we get as a figure. And we asked the question, have you ever worked as a young person? What can be done? You know, like, with young people, and of course, with young women also. Mainstreaming youth in every policy area. Do something about young people, okay? But mainstream every kind of youth issue into every existing youth policy area. More opportunities outside of education. This is essential about learning. Because when we think that, you know, like, ah, oh, this is good for young people, we always think about the school system. It is good, it's not bad. But there's a, you know, like a blue ocean out there, lowering entrance barriers, not only for young people, but for young women also. For example, decrease the selection age to 18. Let's start with that, and don't complain that this parliament, the age median in this parliament is 55. The age median in this country is 28. So these are problems. And of course, this value-based approach, get rid of it. You know, like let young people think what they want to think at the end of the day. They're mainstreaming because we know that they're not a homogeneous population. We know that there are young people in there. We know that there are young women in there. We know that there are young, um, uh, disabled women in there. We know that there are pregnant, disabled, young women in the youth population and the story goes on. So this is more or less what we can do. And of course, there are a lot of good organizations which are trying to come up with those, you know, like good stories and all that. What I was talking about, including young people and including young women, is not about teaching young people what we know. It's about providing opportunities to connect with them because they know what to do for themselves best in this country. Thank you very much.